Well, all right, guys, this thing turned out so good. I'm really happy with this thing. It, the gloss is just amazing. The pop, the, the, the little base, I'm really happy with that. And I wanted to kind of point out one thing. I left this kind of a satin finish. I didn't take it up to, to like the same gloss level as the, the sphere. And I did that on purpose. Um, I wanted some separation. I wanted it to look different a little bit so that it didn't look like all one piece when it's just being displayed. Um, I don't know if that if I accomplished that, but it does look good. It looks fine. And I also want to mention, uh, you know, when you're doing something like this where you have, you know, this is all stabilized wood, but, you know, the wood is not going to get the same gloss level as the resin. It's just resin's glossier uh, solid surface, and it's going to pop more. Um, just be kind of, you know, just be aware that if you try and polish up just wood, it's not going to get the same sheen. And I'm fine with it. I knew that was going to happen. But if you wanted everything to be the same, you're either going to have to put a finish, a top coat finish on the whole thing, which I really didn't want to do that with a sphere. That would be kind of hard to, to spray finish. Uh, or you can do what I did on the base, honestly, because the sheen level on this between the wood and the resin is pretty much the same. So you can kind of sand it down, I guess, and you'll get kind of a, the same kind of sheen. It won't be so, you know, resin glossy and wood not so glossy. So I just wanted to mention that. Uh, also, I wanted to kind of give a little disclaimer. This is not by any means any kind of a how-to video on how to use that sphere jig. I just wanted to show you guys uh, me turning it. Um, the story behind that jig, I've had it for like a year and a half and I got a couple of good results with it and then I got some bad results with it and I kind of just put it away and thought, eh, I can just do this by hand, I think. I, I, it's easier for me. And I just kind of gave up. I didn't have time to mess with it. But after doing the grapevine sphere, trying to do it by hand and completely not getting it spherical, uh, I thought, you know, let me pull this thing back out. Let me look at it, see if I maybe didn't set it up properly. And I think, honestly, I didn't set it up properly on those times that I got bad results. Um, I got pretty good results, pretty happy with this, uh, this round with it. But at the same time, this is a little bit smaller sphere. Where I had problems was on large spheres with that thing. So I don't know if that, I'm going to have to do some bigger spheres now <laughs> to, to test that out. But I think what was actually a problem, I think one problem I had was I had the cutter too high. And on a spindle, uh, if you're trying to scrape something and you have the cutter too high, uh, it can kind of catch and grab and dig in. And the problem is, if it's too high, the, the, the roundness or, you know, like the, the edge of it is going to push out more and your scrapers tend to dig into it. And that's what I was getting on, that, on those bad results. So uh, you want to be dead center. Um, worst case scenario, you're, you're going to be okay if you're a little lower than center on a, you know, like a sphere or something like that. But uh, you don't want to be above. And I think that was one of the problems that I was having because this went pretty smoothly. Uh, so uh, like I said, don't have a whole lot of experience. So don't really, I don't think I can really answer any questions. I wouldn't feel comfortable answering a bunch of questions about how to use that jig. Um, it is the, it's the Carter Perfect Sphere Jig. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I really, I want to get my hands on a Vermec and kind of compare them. The reason I went with the Carter is you can do larger spheres with it in general. The, the Vermec kind of has a, 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 an upper limit maybe of like, I, if I remember correctly, I haven't looked at it for a while, but like six inches maybe. And I'm like, man, I'm probably, eventually I want to do a big gigantic sphere. So the Carter can handle something a little bit bigger. That's why I picked it. Um, but it, I don't know, like I said, I just, I want to kind of test it out and compare it to, to other ones out there. Um, but uh, overall, really happy, like I said, with this project. So if this is your first time on my channel, uh, we do all kinds of resin casting projects, tips and tricks and experiments around here. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, definitely hit that subscribe button so you get notified when new videos get posted. And uh, I do live streams on Fridays usually. That's my normal schedule, Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Um, make sure to hit the notification bell so you get notified when I go live as well if you want to join in the fun on those. And during the kind of lockdown period, I've been trying to do some more live streams. It's something that I can add uh, during the week a little bit more of. I don't have to edit videos and it, it doesn't add, you know, kind of exponentially increase the amount of time that I have to put into it. I can kind of flip on the camera and do whatever. So uh, be looking for that. Uh, I, I don't have a schedule. I, I just, whenever I have time, I'm, I'm adding extra ones. So make sure you're, you're subscribed and notified or the notification bell is on. Uh, and if you're thinking about getting into resin casting, but you're not really sure where to begin, check out my ebook, The Beginner's Guide to Resin Casting. It answers all those beginner questions like, you know, what do I need to get started? How does it all work? Uh, I see constantly people, you know, just, just recently I saw somebody posted something on Instagram and in the comments section, there were so many people, it, it was a question about, 
resins in general. And, and there was so much wrong information from all these people throwing out their, what they think they know about it that I was just like, I can't even, I can't even wade through this. So uh, this book is meant for that, you know, to, to really explain what are the differences between resins, you know, what kind of stuff do you need to do and what do you need to think about when you're doing this? How does it really work? Uh, the basics are, are good to understand so you can kind of go forward. Once you understand the basics, then you can experiment and have fun with it. So that's why I wrote the book. If you're interested in checking it out, it's over on my website. Uh, so I guess until next time, guys, thanks for watching this video and happy casting.